Good morning again, and today is our final day together. It is Sunday, the Lord's Day, and I thought what a better way to spend our last time together than to talk about peace, because Jesus said, blessed are the peacemakers. We are all aware that in the world today, as we watch the news, we see that in so many places, there is anything but peace. Max Licato, in his book on the Beatitudes, tells a wonderful story. It's the story of Heinz, and he's a good example of this. In Europe in 1934, Hitler's plague of anti-Semitism was infecting a continent. Some would escape it, some would die from it, but 11-year-old Heinz would learn from it. He, he would learn the power of sowing seeds of peace. Heinz was a Jew. The Bavarian village of Firth, where he lived, was being overrun by Hitler's young thugs. His father, a school teacher, lost his job. Recreational activities ceased and tension mounted on the streets. The Jewish families clutched the traditions that held them together. The observance of the Sabbath, Yom Clipper. Old ways took on new significance. As the clouds of persecution swelled and blackened, these ancient precepts were a precious cleft in a mighty rock. And as the streets became a battleground, such security meant survival. Hitler youth roamed the neighborhoods looking for trouble. And young Heinz learned to keep his eyes open. When he saw a band of troublemakers, he would step to the other side of the street. Sometimes he would escape a fight, sometimes not. One day in 1934, a pivotal confrontation occurred. He found himself face to face with a Hitler bully. A, pe a beating appeared inevitable. This time, however, he walked away unhurt, not because of what he did, but because of what he said. He didn't fight back, he spoke up. He convinced the troublemakers that a fight was not necessary. His words kept the battle at bay, and he saw firsthand how the tongue can create peace. He learned the skill of using words to avoid conflict, and for a young Jew in Hitler-ridden Europe, that skill had many opportunities to be honed. Fortunately, his family escaped from Bavaria and made their way to America. Later in life, he would downplay the impact those adolescent experiences had on his development. But one has to wonder, for he grew up, his name became synonymous with peace negotiations. His legacy became that of a bridge builder Somewhere he had learned the power of properly placed words of peace. And one has to wonder if his training didn't come on the streets of Bavaria. You don't know him as Heinz. You know him better by his anglicized name, Henry, Henry Kissinger. Never underestimate the power of a seed. And if any of you are too young to know who Henry Kissinger is, Google his name or give me a call. How good are you at sowing seeds of peace? We may not be called on to ward off international conflict, but we will have opportunities to do something more important, to bring inner peace to troubled hearts. James said in chapter 3 and verse 18, 
and those who are peacemakers will plant seeds of peace and reap a harvest of goodness. We have a small garden and you can see it behind me in a container on our balcony. Sandy planted a couple seed potatoes and it seemed very few days where little green sprouts were coming up. Now weeks later, the plants are about three feet high with flowers which indicate that there are small potatoes underneath the earth, as well as two tomato plants that are doing very well as well. I know I did not cover all of the eight Beatitudes, and some may say that I left out blessed are the persecuted, but there just was not time. And that is the study that each one of us can do on our own. When Jesus was leaving the earth, he said in John 14 and 27, I am leaving you with a gift, peace of heart and mind. And the peace I give isn't fragile like the peace the world gives. So don't be troubled or afraid. Well, go out and have a good day. Celebrate the Lord's Day. Get your gardening gear going and plant some seeds of peace today and you will reap a harvest of goodness. Thank you so much for joining me this week. I hope you enjoy the rest of your summer. And our final letter to God comes from a little girl and her name is Susie and she says, Dear God, if you watch me at church on Sunday morning, I will show you my shiny new shoes. Goodbye and see you again.